السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين صلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرة ما بعد May Allah protect you all from the sinner, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Amen. The Sagheer from him is the Kabeer, the Major and the Minor, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Amen. Imam al-Nabi, Rahimahu Allah Ta'ala, speaks about one of those prohibited actions. And he now dedicates this chapter for Ghaddu al-Basar, guarding the eyes and the sight from watching and seeing that which is not permissible or haram. And he began by defining what is considered zina. And when it comes to zina, most people think of zina or fornication or adultery um, as the actual act of having an intercourse with someone in an illicit uh, relationship, haram relationship. But that's the obvious one, that they all agree this is zina. But can zina be less than that? Is there anything like minor zina? Well, I mean, what is that then? If, if so, uh, I want to make sure that I, I don't fall into that. And that's what Imam al-Nawr rahimahullah dedicated this chapter and this hadith, at the beginning of the chapter, he started by a few ayat. قال الله تعالى قل للمؤمنين يغضوا من أبصارهم He says, tell the believing men to lower their gaze, means from watching that which is forbidden for them. And he also, in the continuation of the ayah, later on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also told the, believe, the believing women. وقل للمؤمنات يغضن من أبصارهم And tell the believing women that they guard their sights and their eyes, that they don't look at what Allah made haram for them. وقال إن السمع والبصر والفؤاد كل أولئك كان عنه مسؤولة. Verily the hearing and the sight and the heart of each of those ones will be questioned by Allah Azza wa Jal. This ayah Subhanallah can be really scary if you think about that everything you see, everything you listen to, everything that scratches into your heart that like you desire, you gotta be asked about this. Alhamdulillah, Allah Azza wa Jal forgave us what scratches in the heart, right? Unless you act upon it. But at least, you can imagine that Allah knows about everything, including that which you think about. That's very scary, really. And Allah says that you're going to be questioned about what you see and what you hear. وَقَالَ تَعَالَىٰ يَعْلَمُ خَائِنَةَ الْأَعْيُنِ وَمَا تُخْفِ الصُّدُورِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the fraud of the eyes and all that the breast conceal. What's the meaning of fraud? They said fraud of the eyes, the deception of the eyes, you could say. The deception of the eyes. Ibn Abbas explained that. He says, خائنت الأعين, the deception of the eyes, is the man sitting with his friends in a gathering, and something haram, you know, they see some sight that they should not be looking at, and he pretends that he's not looking or watching. And the moment his friend's eyes go away from him, he sneaks a peek. That's what's called khainat al ayun You know, in nowadays, for example, you'll be watching something on TV, and then there is something wrong on TV that you should not be looking at, right? Khainat al ayun is when you look at the door. When you look at the door, and then you continue watching. Why did you look at the door for? Because you want to see if anyone comes through the door. You don't want people to see you doing that. That is khainat al-ayun. The deception, you're fooling yourself basically. Like you're pretending that nothing is going on, but there is. So Allah subhanahu is warning us again this. Like you're going to be asked about that. وَقَالْ إِنَّ رَبَّكَ لَبِالْمِرْصَادِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Verily your Lord is ever watchful over them. So if Allah is watching over them, what does that mean? He sees everything that they see. And then he brought this hadith, hadith 16, 22. قَالَ وَعَنْ أَبِي هُرَيْرَةِ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ عَنْ النَّبِيِّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَمَ أَنَّهُ قَال كُتِبَ عَلَى ابْنِ آدَمَ نَصِيبُهُ مِنَ الزِّنَا مُدْرِكٌ ذَلِكَ لَا مَحَالَ The Messenger of Allah says over here, Allah has written the, the, uh, the very portion of zina which a man, a man means a human being, will indulge in. There will be no escape from it. What does that mean? Like if you look at zina again in the definition of zina, we think of it as just the actual act of fornication and, uh, and adultery. But here the Prophet is breaking it down. Not the act itself, even what could lead to the act will also count as part of a zina. So he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, قال, العينان زناهم النظر. The eyes, they commit zina through what? Through lustful sight. Watching, looking. قال, والأذنان زناهم الاستماع. And the ears also commit zina by listening. What kind of listen, what kind of listens, what kind of thing they listen to? 
anything that leads to, to, to provoke that shahwa. And frankly, most of these songs today, a'udhu billah, you can't even listen to it. There's nothing decent in there. And all will provoke that shahwa. That's part of the zina as well. وَاللِّسَانُ زِنَاهُ الْكَلَامِ And the tongue even also commits zina. But of course, with those words, it also would in, 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 uh, entail the provocation of fahisha or zina and also the desire. وَالْيَدُ زِنَاهَ الْبَطْشِ And the hand also commits the zina through that lustful grip. وَالْرِجْلُ زِنَاهَ الْخُطَى And the legs and the foot, your feet, will also commit zina. And that's by walking to the place where these things happen. قَالَ وَالْقَلْبُ يَهْوَى وَيَتَمَنَّى And the heart yearns and desires. Like the heart is just like, why is this haram, ya akhi? Why can't this be halal? You know, shaitan is clever, right? When you put, when put you in the situation, it's just like, oh man. And you know, just, why is it so haram? Why can't this be halal? That now what, the, what your heart is, is communicating with you, like you desire the haram to be allowed. A'udhu billahi min shaitan al-rajim. Qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wa yusaddiqu thalika al-farju aw yukadzibu. And then he said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the private part would approve all of that or disapprove. The ulama they said means one of two things. Approve or disapprove by feeling the shahwa there. Like the stimulation becomes an action. So you could feel it there that, you know what, your, your body is responding to the lust, lustful sight, a lustful look. Your body is, is responding to the lustful, you know, word that you're hearing and you're listening to, or to the action itself. So eventually you can't stop it. Hormones kick in and your body reacts to that, especially in the private area. Or it could be that the, app, the person will go ahead and follow these desires and then commit the actual zina. So whether just by the provocation of shahwa that leads to the stimulation to feeling it in the private part, or the actual that these things, we don't think of them to be serious. Like what I'm doing, I'm just watching videos. Or I'm just, you know, not really serious. I'm just kind of looking through the window or this or that. Thinking it's not that serious. But you never know. The shaitan is very clever. And if this shahwa becomes intense, it's not going to become satisfactory anymore. And people will take the extra step to go even farther. And here, subhanAllah, if you look at what the Prophet ﷺ is actually, how he mentioned these categories, it has a natural sequence. He said, Sallallahu Al The first, the beginning of everything is what? The eyes. Because the ulama, they say, Al-Aynan, Baridu Al-Qalb. Like the eyes carries the male to the heart. Whatever you watch, the heart receives it. So that's the first sense. So the beginning sometimes is just a, a random look. You did not even intend. You may be just flipping your phone and you're just watching whatever, something neutral. Doesn't have to be even yeah, something uh, da'wah. Neutral stuff. And then something comes up. Some of those images or some of those videos and the shaitan keeps whispering to you to keep looking at it. And then you look. And that look becomes another one. And then another one, and then another one, and then subhanAllah leads to the haram. So, looking. And then he says what? Al-udhunan. When you look at something, you want to hear what's going on. You want to hear the actions. You want to hear the sounds of it. It's also a lustful thing. Qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wal kalam And then you start kind of like desiring it, so you're probably talking about it. Or maybe sounding it yourself as well too. And then the action comes when the ha- with the hand, and then the legs take you to where you're supposed to go, Audhu Billah, for these things. And he says that's when the heart is being completely attached right now, Allah Musta'an. And when this happens, what is left? The private part will approve it or otherwise. Natural sequence of events. So what does that exactly mean, Jama'ah? Watch your eyes. Don't fall into the traps of the shaitan. It starts from looking. Just because you think, Alhamdulillah, no, I'm, I, I don't do these things, I'm too far. This is the least I could do, so it's okay. No, be careful. The other thing, some people think that this hadith, giving them justification for the wrongdoing, because they said, look, even the Prophet says, there is no escape. The Prophet says, there is no escape. What does that mean? It means, if I do it, I mean, 
Prophet says there is no escape, right? So we're given ourselves justification to fall into the haram because the Prophet says there is no escape. No, there is no escape. It means over here that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala equipped us with the instruments and the tools that by which we will feel and desire these things. It doesn't mean that you allow yourself and open the floodgate to your senses to experience all these things. That's not what it is. Unless it's halal. But for the haram, make sure to safeguard your, your eyes first before anything else. Otherwise, if you don't pay attention to that, it will catch, it catch you in a moment of weakness and will capture your heart. And if the heart's being captured by that, Allah al-Musta'an, the body will respond to it in all means to fulfill those desires. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect our eyes and such from the haram. Amen. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect our eyes from the haram, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Our ears from falling to the haram, Ya Rabbil Alameen. We ask Allah to protect our tongues from speaking anything that displeases to Allah Azza wa Jal. We ask Allah to protect our hands, our legs, our hearts, Ya Rabbil Alameen. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from falling into the haram, Ya Rabbil Alameen. We ask you to give us the purity of the heart and the mind and the actions, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Ya Allah, we ask you that to show us that which is right and follow it and that which is wrong and stay away from it, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Walhamdulillah, wa sallallahu alayhi wa Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Any questions, Jama'ah? Yes. Shaykh, what about the play of games? You know, there is some advertisement like in between the breaks. No. Uh, watch, watching football once in a year or something, you know? Yeah. So, so if you're watching a game, basically, and then there's a break and the commercial break shows sometimes some of these things and so on. This sort of basa, the hadith is coming. Uh, later on, if you see something wrong, just turn away. Just because that doesn't mean you're allowed to look at it. You just turn away from it. Nah. nah. This doesn't, didn't talk about like dressing up provocatively, right? Okay. What's the problem? What's, what's wrong with that? I'm saying like that, that's also like included in this. Also. Oh, basically, if someone dresses up in a way to be provocative, you're saying? That it's also part of the committing zina? Well, I, I, we understand if people decided to, to dress up or undress up, basically, to be provocative. Now, that's their sin that they're committing. That's their way of committing zina on their own. You looking at that, that's your own sin. So our duty is to protect each other. So we don't look at that, and we advise the others not to look like this when they, actually, when they go out. Wallahu alam. What, the, what is the practical way, basically, to protect yourself from falling into this trap of the shaitan? Look, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke about the shaitan, He didn't say, وَلَا تَتَّبِعُ الشَّيْطَان He didn't say, don't follow the shaitan. Instead, He said what? وَلَا تَتَّبِعُ خُطُوَاتِ الشَّيْطَان Don't follow into the steps of the shaitan. Don't follow into the steps of the shaitan. What does that mean? Shaitan is not going to come straight forward telling you, hey, let's commit zina. He's not going to say that. Instead, he's going to say, hey, look at that. Right, just look, man. Start with something little. So if you want to safeguard yourself, if you want to save your ears from the haram or your hands and legs from the haram, then start with your eyes. Start with your eyes. Is it going to be easy? No, but it's worth it. It is worth it. Worth it in the dunya and the akhirah. Imam ibn Qayyim, rahimahullah ta'ala, he spoke about ghadd al-basar in his book, ad wa dawa like the, 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 the venom and the, and the serum. And he spoke about how this poison you can save yourself the trouble if you lower your gaze. And he gave all the benefits you get from lowering your gaze in the dunya. He goes, you will save yourself the trouble of um, um, uh, feeling ag ag agonizing about something that you saw and you can't have access to. I mean, all these people online, for, for instance, what are the chances Billah, that someone's going to reach out to them? What are these chances? So therefore, watching these things, you're just agonizing yourself, a'udhu billah, about something that you would never have any access to. So therefore, some of them, you just don't look, and you save yourself from these sites. That's just one example of how can you protect yourself, alhamdulillah, in the dunya, before the akhirah. So again, it starts with the eyes. Now. Subhanakallah wa bihamdik, ashhara ala ala ant astafirka tubarik. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May Allah protect you all, Ya Rabbil Alameen, and you loved on your families.